I just came back from the Databricks Data and AI Summit and in this video I want to talk about the top 5 announcements from Databricks. What they are, why they matter and most importantly what are the limitations. I'm Dan Williams, I'm a Databricks MVP and the Partner Solutions Architect Champion and I've been working with Databricks Technologies since early 2017 so I've seen my fair share of announcements. I'm going to start with the most important one though. At least this is my opinion, okay? And that is the free edition of Databricks. Just log in and you can get a free slice of Databricks forever. Databricks free edition replaced the community edition that was limited in features. With this new edition, learners and hobbyists finally get the real Databricks experience, not just a sandbox with reduced capabilities. And this was something that was needed for a long time because not everyone could afford to pay for compute while they were learning Databricks technology. I heard so many people complain about this throughout the years and it was harder to onboard new engineers. Some even tried to boycott the summit to their own advantage. I mean, some guy tried to do this the week of the summit. He's an influencer talking about how much money he made when he was employed, but now he wanted some freebies from them and thought that the summit was the best time to do that. And once the announcement was made, he was like, oh, you know, that's not good enough for me and my community. It was really fun to see that. Speaking about LinkedIn, send me a connection request because it would be really great to be connected. This announcement, okay, came at the right time because it shows that Databricks is committed to both education and talent development. And yeah, you could hate on them a while back because it wasn't that accessible for anyone to learn Databricks as easily. But now, there's no barrier of entry. So you get a no cost workspace with obviously a tiny cluster and limited DBUs and you also get some sample notebooks to run and play with and you also have access to Unity Catalog, Genie and many more. You can just sign up with a personal email and you get the full Databricks experience. Why this matters is because people will get familiar with the UI and you also get to learn Databricks faster and it's also good for engineers because you can show a lot more demos and capabilities, you can actually build those faster than up until now. I'm expecting a lot more people to start doing demos and to show Databricks capabilities because you don't have to pay for a compute anymore. Well, at least for small tutorials because you won't be able to train machine learning models or anything like that. So you split the database into a base and a lake layer and you take the data that's sitting in these traditional transactional databases and you store it in lakes uh, in an open format. Lakebase is a serverless Postgres base tier and this is built on Neon technology and it sits over Delta or Iceberg files in storage. Now this is very interesting because you keep costs low because cold data lives in cheap storage but your apps can still hit the base layer for quick inserts, updates or lookups. You should really properly separate compute and storage in that database layer in Postgres. So you get reduced OLTP costs, you get cold data that lives on S3 in AWS or blob storage in Azure and your hot rows stay in memory. We think it should be built on open source uh, and we think that Postgres essentially has one. Also the underlying parquet or iceberg helps because you can exit easily due to being open source. But a great feature is that you can branch off a full clone very fast if you want to do some testing or if you're an AI agent, okay, you can spin off hundreds of these databases. It should really be built for the AI era. It should be able to launch very quickly because we're going to see a lot of agents launching these uh, and we want to be able to make sure that if they launch hundreds or thousands of these databases, you should only pay for also what Also another using. thing that's really important is that it integrates with the lake house, okay? You get Unity Catalog grants, you get Delta sharing, and also Databricks SQL can query lake-based tables directly. That's what we're super excited about. A simple idea, but kind of hard to pull off. And we think this is gonna be the future of all databases. Now, if we think about challenges, this is a new architecture, so we're gonna have maturity gaps here and there. Interesting to see how this evolves because they believe that this is going to be the future of all databases. So Databricks apps, and we have over 2,500 customers actually building their own applications, you know, vibe coding them, building them. And the beauty of it is that it just integrates directly with Databricks. Databricks apps makes it easy to build secure and governed data applications deployed directly in Databricks and it's governed through Unity Catalog. And really this is about a broader architectural shift of moving the app to the data and AI versus moving the data and AI to the app. 
it's pretty much managed containers for Streamlit, FastAPI or React apps that inherit Unity catalog permissions. This matters because you get everything under one roof, especially the data part. You get data plus backend plus UI, and they're all hosted together. Apps is hosted in Databricks managed containers and infrastructure. You don't need to spin up and manage your own stack. Less DevOps hassle. Everything is governed through Unity Catalog. So you can bring your own permissions to the application. They're also secure by default and you get a fast time to insights because your analysts can publish these in no time. Now, the only challenge that I see is that you still need to design them nicely. As out of the box, you know, the apps look a little bit, let's say, clean, okay? We've had over 20,000 apps created across over 2,500 customers. Even custom apps can look a bit dry, but in the end, they're data apps, so what can you expect? Still, a great announcement, and the guys at Superblocks, the Databricks partner that was demoed at the summit, I met them last week and we talked about their offering. They built a great platform, but most importantly, they're amazing people. Agent Bricks. So these are production AI agents auto-optimized on your data, okay? So they provide you data intelligence. Agent Bricks. Production agents auto-optimized on your data with built-in judges. It's a framework that synthesizes evaluation tests, then explores prompt plus vector plus fine-tuned combos, and then it shows cost versus quality plots. The reason why this matters, okay, is because you get objective grading. You actually get numeric values, not just having to trust your gut based on the response. Also, you can pick a token budget that still meets your quality threshold, so you're able to choose a better cost versus quality metric. Another good thing is that you get fast tuning. For example, a support manager can write, I don't know, like stop recommending competitor products and then the agent actually retrains. First, you select a task and then declare a high level description of what you want the agent to do. And then you attach your relevant data. From there, Agent Bricks solves the three problems that the Ali just spoke about. Based on your data and your task, we automatically create quality evaluation benchmarks. Obviously, there are some challenges as well because it's still in beta and also synthetic tests can miss edge cases. And for example, you also need to be careful about data privacy. I still need to dive deeper into this announcement though, but it definitely feels like it's a big thing. So Lakebridge is a free, open, AI-powered uh, migrations to modernize your data warehouse. Fifth is Lakebridge, a free, open, AI-powered migration tool. It's pretty much a code parser, an LLM converter, and a validator for Teradata, Oracle, SQL Server, and other legacy data warehouses. This matters because it can save you months of manual migrations. Also, there's no license fee, you just pay for Databricks Compute. Now, the challenges are the same as with any other AI tool. AI suggestions can sometimes rewrite logic incorrectly, and this happens actually more often than not, so it needs side-by-side -side tests, which can get a little bit costly. But to be fair, okay, this is a great announcement and it's an interesting tool. I'm really looking forward to hear some success stories by people that are using Lakebridge. I said five, okay, but I'm gonna give you one more announcement. We are thrilled to announce to you the introduction of Databricks One. Databricks One is a brand new experience for Databricks, designed specifically for business users. The one place business users go to get their data. This is a portal that merges search, chats, dashboards, alerts, and catalog browsing. So business users have a single place to explore and collaborate on insights. The reason why this matters is because business people have one view, okay? And this is easier from a UX perspective and easier for data discovery. I think it would be great if this could actually replace SharePoint sites. The challenge with this one is that wider adoption can be tricky depending on change management in large organizations, but otherwise it's a great tool and I'm really looking forward to seeing it in the next months. But what announcements are in your top five? What features are you most interested in? I really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you like what you heard, please like, share, and subscribe. And also connect with me on LinkedIn because I would love to know what use cases you're actually working on. I'll see you in the next one.